Chapter 13, House of Fire As the years progressed, Yudhishthir's popularity among the people of Hastinapur grew. He was known for his wisdom, righteousness, and good conduct. The people wanted him as their new king as soon as possible. Under pressure from his council, King Dhritarashtra formally appointed Yudhishthir as the crown prince. This angered Duryodhana. He desired the crown for himself. His father, Dhritarashtra, was the eldest of the Kuru dynasty. But because Dhritarashtra was born blind, he was considered unable to fulfill the duties of a king. So instead, the second eldest, Pandu, the father of the Pandavas, was crowned king. When Pandu went into exile, Dhritarashtra fulfilled the duties of king. And later, when Pandu died of a curse, Dhritarashtra's reign as king was extended. Now that Yudhishthir, the eldest son of Pandu, was coming of age, Dhritarashtra's time as king was coming to an end. But Duryodhan believed that the crown should rightfully pass to him. He was the eldest son of Dhritarashtra. His father was robbed of the crown because of his disability. And yet, he had still fulfilled the duties of king for all of these years. Duryodhan came up with a plan to rid himself of the entire Pandava family. There was an upcoming five-day festival in Vanavat, one of the kingdoms of Hastinapur. Duryodhan went to his father, the king. Father, since Yudhishthir is the crown prince, he should represent the royal family at the festival. In fact, it would be good if the entire Pandava family went along. They are wonderful sights and sounds at Vanavat, and they would have a magnificent holiday there. The Trashra suspected the ill intentions of Duryodhan, but he agreed to the proposal. Secretly, he desired for his own son to be the next king, and not Yudhishthir. Dhritarashtra appointed the Pandava family to be the royal representatives at Vanavat for the festival. Yudhishthir was suspicious, but agreed to fulfill the duties required of him. Meanwhile, Duryodhan had commissioned a grand mansion to be built for the Pandava family in Vanavat but the construction crew were instructed to build the mansion from lac, an extremely inflammable substance. One of the builders involved, loyal to Vadura, the Prime Minister, sent word back of the villainous procedures involved in the construction. Vadura warned Yudhishthir ahead of their trip to Vanavat to be extremely cautious. When the Pandava brothers and Kunti arrived in Vanavat, they settled into the mansion. Four days went by with no incident, and they had an enjoyable time at the festival. On the fifth night, the mansion burst into flames, and the inhabitants of Vanavat watched in horror as they observed a raging inferno which no human could survive. Chapter 14 Deadly Sanctuary During the time the Pandavas and Kunti spent in Vanavat, they were on high alert for any foul schemes of Jordan. When they arrived at the mansion constructed for them, Yudhishthir could smell the scent of lac, a highly inflammable substance. Thankfully, their uncle Vadura had warned them ahead of time. Although Duryodhan had commissioned the construction of the mansion, some of the boulders involved were loyal to Vadura. Vadura had them secretly construct an escape tunnel under the mansion. At night, the Pandavas and Kunti slept in the basement of the mansion. On the final night, Yudhishthir arranged a ceremonial dinner at the mansion. The key accomplices of Dhirodhan were also invited. At the end of the function, the Brahmins were sent home, but the accomplices were kept entertained. The Pandavas and Kunti went down to the tunnels and Beam set the house on fire as they escaped through the tunnels. Vidura had arranged a transport to take them across the river and into the forest. They dared not return to Astinapur. Dhirodhan had spies and assassins available everywhere. The family had to go into hiding and planned their next move. When news of the disaster reached Astinapur, the kingdom was heartbroken. Duryodhan, feigning sadness, went to Vanavat to verify the deaths himself. What was left of the bodies in the mansion was burnt beyond recognition, and Duryodhan took them as the confirmation of the end of the Pandavas and Kunti. Meanwhile, the family escaped deep into the forest. At one point, Beam carried his mother and all of his brothers. They were exhausted from sleep 
and food deprivation. The family eventually fell asleep under a banyan tree while Beam set off in search of water. When he returned with the water, he found his family still fast asleep. So he sat down on a rock and watched over them. Nearby, an evil demon of the forest smelt humans. He longed for the taste of human flesh and he sent his demon sister off to investigate. However, when the demoness Hidimba found the humans, she was immediately overcome with desire when she saw Beam. She fell in love with the large, mighty Pandava brother. Assuming the form of a beautiful woman, Hidimba approached Beam. My dear, this forest is not safe for you and your family. My brother Hadimb is the ruling demon of this forest. He loves human flesh, best of all, and he sent me to find you for his meal tonight. But I have fallen in love with you, and I will help you and your family to escape. Before Beam could respond, a thunderous voice emanated from the forest. You treacherous wench! Now you will die along with this human family, and I will have a grand meal of human and demon flesh tonight. Hidimb, Hidimba's brother, had arrived. Chapter 15 Demon Slayer When Adim saw his sister Hidimba professing her love to Beam, it threw him into a rage. You will die for betraying me. Hidim grabbed his sister by the arm. This angered Beam. Get your hands off her, demon. Fight me instead. Beam threw Hidim through the air. Hadim was taken aback by the power of the young man. But Beam was no ordinary human. He was gifted to Kunti by the wind god Vayu, and as such had immense strength since birth. And this strength was enhanced even further when he was a boy by the Naga King Vasuki, who gave him eight vats of the magical potion Rasakunda. Hidim rushed Beam, attacking him with all his beastly strength. The thunder of their encounter shook the forest and uprooted great trees. The commotion woke the rest of the Pandava family from their deep slumber. Beam's brothers readied themselves for battle but they quickly realized there was no need. Hidim was no match for Beam. After a few minutes of battle, Beam eventually lifted Hadim above his head, spun him around and around, and finally smashed him into the ground. With a few gurgling sounds, the demon that had terrorized the inhabitants of the forest for decades was dead. Kunti noticed the beautiful woman next to them. Who are you, young lady? asked Kunti. Mother, my name is Hidimba. Your son has killed my brother Hidim. Hidim sent me to find you for his meal tonight, but I have fallen in love with your son and I warned him of my brother's intentions instead. With your blessing, I wish to marry your son. Kunti noticed that Beam seemed pleased with the proposal. Very well, daughter. If my son Beam agrees, I provide you with my blessings, but on one condition. During the night, we require our son's great strength to protect us, but in the morning and until sunset, he may spend his time with you. Beam had a second condition for the marriage to go ahead. I will spend my days with you, but only until you are blessed with a child. Then I will return to my family. Hadimba agreed to the conditions, and Beam and her commenced their matrimonial life. In the morning, Beam left with Hadimba. In the evenings, he returned to protect his mother and brothers during the night. After some time, Hidimba gave birth to a baby boy. But this was no ordinary child. Thank you for watching so far. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please hit the like button. If you're new here, please subscribe. This will ensure that more people can find this resource. Click the notification button so that you can be the first to know about new uploads. And please do comment below. I'll do my best to reply to any questions. Thank you.